found about on Providence. I'm sorry, sorry, that was in the state. I said they're, they're going to apparently have uh, put down the asphalt around the turnabout at Providence, and that because as I'm coming in, the truck carrying that big, <laughs> oh, the big layer. Yeah, was we'll we'll trying to make the turn <laughs> off. Of okay, ready to start. Did I please stand for the pledge of allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to call the Planning Commission meeting to order. Uh, this is Wednesday, April 24th. Um, First thing on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone uh, who's put a card in, Robin? This no is public time. comment, no. Okay, then we'll, we'll uh, close public comment. So then the first item on the uh, agenda is the approval of the action minutes. We have two to approve this evening, uh, February 27th and March 27th. So yeah. anyone had a chance to review them? Yeah. Any, should we just do them one at a time? Let's do... Uh, February 27th, 1st. Anybody have any questions or comments on those minutes? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I move we accept Wednesday, February 27th, minutes planning meeting. Is there a second? Second. All right. And so a motion made by uh, Commissioner Fred Edwards, seconded by Ron Gilbert. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, I have a motion for March 27th. Actually, any questions or comments on March 27th before we make a motion? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I'll move to accept the, uh, the minutes of the March 27th Planning Commission meeting. I'll second that. All right, uh, motion made by Commissioner Nolte, seconded by Commissioner Edwards. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. They're both unanimous, Robin. Okay, so the first item on the agenda this evening is the uh, preliminary plan. Actually, I need to, since there was no comment, do I need to read the whole uh, Planning Commission statement? Um, we're not going to have a public hearing, but you want to go ahead and just do the preliminary Okay, I will do just that. <laughs> The Planning Commission is tasked by the city's subdivision ordinance to conduct a public hearing on proposed preliminary plats that have been found to be complete by the Community Development Department. At the conclusion of the public <laughs> hearing, the Planning Commission is required to review the proposed preliminary plat and provide comments and make recommendations regarding the plat to the Community Development Director. The Planning Commission does not approve or reject the proposed preliminary plat, but merely provides comments or recommendations based on the public hearing and the Planning Commission's review of the proposed preliminary plat. All right, Robin, so if you would sound the item. Yeah, please. just for your FYI, we do have, um, after um, Melissa makes her presentation, we do have one a person who is here to wants to comment on the preliminary plat, so. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, hi, thank you guys for having me tonight. So um, we're here to discuss the preliminary plat for Cogburn Creek. It's off Cogburn Road, um, just before Hopewell Road as you can see in the site map here. Um, the owner is Georgia Tennessee Development Partners LLC and the site planner is Reese Hoops and Fincher. It's a 14.326 acre tract and it's currently undeveloped. Um, the developer's proposing 11 single family lots to yield a 0.77 units per acre density on an AG1 zoning. So here is the site plan. Um, as you can see, it's just one entrance here off of Cogburn Road. Um, we've got the rural view shed up front, and then they're proposing 11 lots that range from 1 to 1.3 acres in size. Um, we have one detention pond located at the low point at the front of the neighborhood here. Um, after a re staff review of this preliminary plot, it does meet all of our codes. Um, as we mentioned at the last meeting, this one does have a few staff concerned as far as stormwater. Um, we are, we're, we're really not sure at the preliminary phase of this um, project whether 
the all of the lots can actually be picked up in the stormwater pond that's at the front of the development. So how we are moving forward with it now is um, just we approved it. It meets all of our codes. If during the LDP phase we feel like it's changed significantly once they go through full engineering, then we ask that we could bring it back to you guys for approval at that time. So the developer is here. If you have any questions, him or I will try to answer them for you at this time. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Um, so does the developer have any comments uh, regarding staff's uh, remarks this evening? Hi, I'm Guy Cherwanek with Georgia Tennessee Development Partners. And no, Melissa said it best. This is a preliminary concept plan. We've reviewed it with our land planner and our engineers have worked on it. Uh, they believe, and we believe that it, it, it can, we can satisfy all the requirements. Um, but once we get into full engineering, we'll vet those issues that, that Melissa referenced here, which is stormwater. She's referenced, she's, she has risen or made that an issue. But the, the process is very thorough. If it, if it doesn't meet the standards, we'll make the adjustments so that it does. When I say the process, the process between my private engineering consultant and the city of Milton's engineers who are all PEs and very capable engineers. And I'm sorry, you stated your name, but not your address. Would you state both again for the record, please? It's Guy Cherwanek. The address is uh, 300 Sablewood, Milton 30004. Great, thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Any questions for the developer at this point? Mm -hmm. I will I will have some, but I think I'd like to hear the other the citizens' comments first, Robin. Yeah. It is um, Jack Mandura or Mandela. I can't, I'm sorry. I did it right before. Mandula. Yeah. Mandula. Thank you. The printing was sloppy. That's my fault. <laughs> no problem. My name is uh, Jack Mandula, 2355 Saddle Springs Drive, Milton, Georgia. As you may remember, I was here a month ago to talk to you about this particular development. We're a property owner downstream about a quarter mile off this tributary tri of Chicken Creek. And at that time, I addressed three issues that, in my opinion, still have not been satisfactorily addressed with this development. <coughs> and I understand it meets all the codes, but what is extremely unique about this piece of property and maybe many of you drive down this stretch of Cogburn, is extremely steep. Much of this site is over 15% grade. The average grade on it is 10%, and then it drops right into the creek. And unfortunately, that creek then goes into Starnes Lake, which has already had significant siltation problems. So you remember the first point I talked about last month was the uh, public safety issue of the road. At this point, the site doesn't show any acceleration or deacceleration lanes on Cogburn. My opinion is we ought to have at least a minimum of a right southbound deacceleration lane so that as people come down the hill, which is again about 15 degrees grade, that they're not having to ride their brakes and only to have not pay attention what they're doing particularly or have poor weather, wet roads, icy roads, uh, slide and, and rear end right into somebody else. Um, and at this point, the, the site doesn't show anything in terms of road management. In my, and in my opinion, all we're going to do is create a public safety issue. The second issue had to do with, um, as I talked about last month, is uh, the site development. Again, when this site, this site now is primarily vegetated, large trees, underbrush, uh, about uh, a third to half of this land is going to be stripped for roads, for retention ponds, for home sites. And that, in my concern, at that point, my biggest concern is the erosion we're going to have. Typically, your standard uh, fencing, erosion control fencing, is in no way going to be adequate on a 15% graded site to prevent significant siltation from dumping into this creek. And as I remember before, too, uh, our lake was dredged in uh, late 99, early 2000. That cost Fulton County over half a million dollars. And all we're doing is having these developments, Clearbrook, Crooked Creek, continue to dump siltation into this lake. And it's probably not too far from the very distant future that this is going to have to happen again in this creek, uh, the lake to be able to provide adequate uh, flood control retention. And then my third point was is that after the homes are built, you've got cleared area, pools, driveways. There's going to be a lot of runoff on this site. And in my belief, again, one retention pond is going to be in no way sufficient to control that water flow 
to be able to gradually release it into the creek. So again, I, I reiterate these points to you because in my opinion, there's been, while it does meet code at this point, because of the unique characteristics of this site, we need to address issues that are not even being discussed today. Uh, thank you for your hearing uh, my comments. Thank you. Okay. Pardon me for the pronunciation, Mr. Chawarik. Mr. Chawarik, um, would you like to address any of those concerns expressed by the resident? Yes, those are all very important concerns. Um, the three concerns are, one, he was concerned about discharge of silk into a blue line creek, which we border. Secondly, he's concerned about the topography and how we manage that. And um, I believe third, he said he's concerned about the traffic and how to manage that. I'll, I'll address them one at a time. First of all, these are all disciplines of engineering. Uh, Milton has a transportation engineer and that's her job. She studies transportation artery. She studies the traffic issues and they make recommendations to our engineer. So during this process of engineering, they will thoroughly vet that process. They have standards and they make recommendations on where deceleration is appropriate and where it's not. Um, if during that process the engineers say, hey, this is what we need to do, then our private engineer will make the adjustments to the plan. The issue regarding the blue line in state waters, that is a major issue with every developer. There are severe consequences and penalties that are assessed on us if we violate those. Um, we take all the appropriate measures that are required to protect state waters. When we discharge into state waters, that's a failure and there's a severe fine and a penalty. And we, that's the last thing in the world um, that we want to have happen. But development is development. We, we install all the appropriate BMP measures. We have monitoring that's done on a weekly basis. We are responsible to a state agency for the discharge point where water leaves our site. It's measured, tested, and there's a third party consultant that we have to hire independent that reports to the state. I appreciate what uh, the concern is, and we do need to protect our waters, but the laws are in place to protect the waters and the fines are in place if we don't. Um, as far as the topography, if you look through lots one through five, those lots are probably gonna be slab. That's, those are nice flat lots. Um, lots 7 through 11 will be basement lots. We're not concerned with the grades on those lots. They're all going to be easy, manageable basement lots. Um, once you get to the rear yard, yes, there's grade, but it, that's natural when you lead into a creek. I don't consider these lots to be difficult lots at all. They're all manageable uh, lots. Uh, the, I think the fourth concern was could the stormwater pond handle the volume. Once again, that's regulated by a state agency regarding the volume of water that we have to manage for water quality and for detention. And there's another engineer at Milton and that's his job. And, and he is very thorough in making sure that we handle the water quality and we detain for the 100 year storm that we have the capacity within the pond and we discharge after the storm the way we're supposed to discharge. But that again, that's engineer to engineer. So I can't sit here and go through the drill down details that I go through, but I can promise you that that engineer is very thorough and he exhausts our private engineer and we have to make sure that we've satisfied his requirements or we simply don't get our permit. So I appreciate the concerns, but once again, these are engineer, engineering issues that we have to satisfy um, in order for us to get our permit. Thank you. Uh, any questions for the uh, developer, gentlemen? I have a couple. Nobody else does. Um, we had a, because the community was able to attend last time, we actually had a pretty thorough conversation. So I want to go back to some of the things that we, we talked about. Um, I think it had to do, the first, the first one I want to address is, um, the, the retention of the water or how it's going to be managed when it, I, my understanding was that the grade slopes 
uh, from a midpoint down toward lots five, six, and seven. Is that correct? We haven't developed, we have not finalized the grading plan. Um, we don't see any reason why we can't grade it in such a way that all the water runs down the road and gets into the detention pond. A road has a, um, uh, there's, there's inlets that we install in the development, and there's also catch basins on the road. So it doesn't really make a difference what the grade is. If the road has a crest and it falls one way, there's an inlet in the cul-de-sac. Right. And that inlet dumps into a pipe, and as long as the pipe has the proper grade, it gets to the detention pond. So whether we grade the road so that it all by gravity feeds to the pond or whether it goes into an inlet into a pipe, the water ultimately will get into the pond. Okay. Well, my, the way it was portrayed to us by staff when we heard it last time was that there is a, a midpoint crest between the entrance to the development and the back where five, six, and seven lots are, where there was a concern about the water not being able to get basically up and over the hill to the retention pond. So my, my question to you is, and I, I understand we've got great engineers that are going to worry about right. how it's collected and where it's collected, <clears throat> but um, have you given consideration to the fact that if it is a downhill grade, how the water in its, you know, in its collection, which may be significant, and some of, think about some of the rains we've had more recently, and the possibility, or the, you know, I know if it's engineered as such, you would have to cooperate with it, but a second um, detention pond down in that area to deal with that water. Have you contemplated that yet, or is it too early in the engineering process to do that? The answer, <clears throat> the answer is yes. If we need another detention pond, we will install an, another detention pond. But I think what's important is that if you have a crest and a road, just because this is lower than this, you could still have a pipe that's falling at the correct rate. So this might be lower, and you're right. The water would not be able to get over the crest into the other part, but if the water gets into a catch basin, and the pipe, which is underground, right. it doesn't. The pipe doesn't have to follow the grade of the road. I understand. The that. pipe follows the grade that we determine just to get it to where it needs to get. So the answer is, right. we will engineer it to get the water where it needs to get. If it needs to all get to one pond, great. If the engineer decides, you know what, we can't satisfy Ken because Ken is really insisting that he's not happy with the the way that um, the and Ken is your your internal engineer. Um, then we'll we'll install a second we'll install a second pond, but that's something once again that'll be vetted during engineering. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, it is a concern of mine because of um, I, I think Mr. Uh, Mendoza <clears throat> makes a good point about you know the concern for water management and especially down downstream and uh, with the lake in particular that's been silt you know silt laden once where it had to be dredged. Um, I want to make sure that we don't create problems that we can mitigate by making sure it's properly engineered. Um, and like I said, going back to the staff report from last time, it was stated with enough concern that it warranted a significant amount of conversation from us in the last meeting. I don't want to let it go unnoticed in, in this one as well. So thank you for your um, comments on that. The second one, I guess, is a, is a uh, question, two questions for staff. Um, Robin or Melissa, when we do the... Um, well, at what point does the traffic study take place? After the engineering of the development where we know exactly where the road entrance is going to be, do we do a traffic study to arrest some of the concerns about whether we need a XL or a D-cell lane? Yeah, the, the preliminary plot went under transportation review for, to get it to this point. And so what Sarah looks at is site distance. She looks at the number of trips. She looks at the speed limit on the road and evaluates whether a decel lane is warranted. She would have made that comment at this phase if it were required. But we will also go back through that exact same review process when the LDP permit comes in. So she will review it all again. So it will essentially get two looks at it. Okay. And if that's warranted at that time, that will be a comment. Great. Thank you. And the last... I think the last question I've got, which is also for um, staff, I think it was Mr. Mandula who made the comment about it was a Fulton County expense a number of years ago when the pond, the uh, lake was last dredged. If if the lake is encountering a silting issue again, whether it's from this development or residue from any others, um, is that still a Fulton County responsibility or has that become a Milton responsibility? Who takes on It's that? called an NCRS lake. There are some, we have a lot of those type of lakes. I mean, I'd have to, 
I don't, to be honest, I don't know who would be responsible now um, okay. for it, so I can't really give you a definitive answer, but um, okay. it is an NCRS lake, uh, which is, I can't even tell you what that means, but yeah. anyway, um, <laughs> it's just not a local farm pond or whatever. It is it, part of part the, of water control. Water part water of control. the pro, uh, overall, you know, flooding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, on, is it on pro private property, or is it... I can't remember if some of our lakes do have property lines go through it. Um, yeah, that's fine. One hundred percent privately owned, including the right. dam structure. Okay, it is private. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. That I think that concludes the questions that I had, and I'll look. I'll have some comments to make before we. Take a vote. Great. <clears throat> Is that it? Any other comments or questions? Thank you. Thank you. Same. Okay. All right. So we. This is where we, we're still. Our process is to take a vote to move it forward as presented. Is that what you've asked us to do in the past, Robin? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I'm. Gonna, I'll ask for a motion for that, but I would like the motion to include a couple of things, please. Um, one is that we do conduct a um, engineering review at the appropriate point for the grade issue that um, has been expressed by Mr. Mandula for the water concerns and whether or not a secondary retention pond is going to be necessary. Number two is I would like some consideration given. Again, it's probably an engineering um, question and that is that we do take into consideration the, the, what the water volume will be and the likelihood of the silting issue as it does address the downstream stream impact as well as the lake impact. And number three is that at the, you know, at the appropriate time that we conduct the uh, uh, traffic study to determine whether a, a desalt lane is necessary. I just want to clarify. There will not, like you all are used to when we do rezonings, there would be a full-blown traffic mm -hmm. study. That's not per se what this right. would mandate. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, it's a traffic memo that right. she gets information. So I just want to clarify. It's mm -hmm. not like they're going to take brand new counts and nope. do complicated, expensive things. It's the review that the transportation, that Sarah does on the transportation. But knowing this address, and this is a pretty high-volume road, I'm sure the traffic count is going to be something that's going to need to be addressed at some point. So I just want to make sure that we don't... Yeah. No, I mean, as um, Melissa said, that's an evaluation that we would not allow <coughs> something to be permitted until which time it was safe per the traffic standards. Thank you. Okay. Just to entertain a motion. I'd like to move that the um, uh, Cogburn Creek subdivision be approved as presented with the uh, uh, three... Uh, additional notations that um, number one uh, during the engineering that an engineering review be conducted uh, with to assess the any grade issues on the plot and uh, if necessary um, that a second um, a retention pond be um, uh, be included uh, second that in engineering studies be done to consider the uh, silting issues um, uh, that uh, that, that may present themselves by by the uh, by the lot, and third, that a uh, traffic study be done in due course. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. That's unanimous. Thank you. Would be curious just to know who does pay for the pond eventually, yeah. and just out of you know. Robin, if you wouldn't mind just getting back to us on that, who does actually? Yeah, pay I'll, I'll yeah. send out an yeah. email regarding the NCRS fund. It's private. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have an easement. The they they would have an easement on it, even though it's private, and so it's probably because it's considered part of the waterway, Fred. If it's considered water management, yeah. The even though it's on private property, the waterway still is the waterway. Uh, but where it comes up is. If I don't know if there's a dam there and then the water flows on through. Yeah. I believe it does. Um, then you've got that. 
responsibility of mm -hmm. taking care of the dam mm -hmm. if it goes out. I've lived through that, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mandula, do you know, um, was the dam yeah. developed by a, a private individual, or was that part of the waterway or water system management dams that are part of this area? It was the latter of the two private okay. waterway yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a series of dams throughout Milton and the surrounding area that are all part of water, water management. Um, so, okay. Yeah, Thank I think um, our stormwater engineer had said uh, we have more NCRS dams, I mean, lakes than any other part of Fulton County. I mean, it's huh. just, we have a, a large amount considering, you know, the area we have. Yeah, so. our, our size. Great. Well, thank <clears throat> you. All right, Robin, would you uh, please sound the next item? Yeah. Uh, the next item is U19-01, BC 1901, 1470 Red Road by Ivera Primo for a use permit for a private school, kindergarten through eighth grade for 80 students, a request for two concurrent variances, one to delete the 75-foot undisturbed buffer and 10-foot improvement setback along the east property line, and two to delete the 100-foot setback along the east property line where the existing structures are located. The applicant has, um, and I copied it in your packet, requested to withdraw this request based on um, input at um, the CZIM meeting and the Design Review Board meeting. And her um, desire is not to go against the community. And the whole point of coming there was to be a part of the community. And the community has made their voices loud and clear. And therefore, she is requesting a withdrawal. So I don't think anybody is here representing them, but I've um, Anyway, that's okay. what's going on. Is there anybody who's caring to make a comment on this? No, thing? we don't have any comments, no. Okay. So it's really just a motion to accept the withdrawal. Yeah, this has to be go to the council for an official withdrawal since it's been advertised, so that's why it's before you. Okay. So no, anybody questions or comments other than what Robin has presented? If not, I will entertain a motion. For withdrawal, if you want. I'm I'll, sorry, I'll, whatever I'll, you want to do. I'll, 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 Oh, um, I'd like to move that um, uh, the uh, U19-01 and BC19-01, uh, that the withdrawal of, uh, of those uh, of U1901 and BC1901 uh, be, be approved. Okay. I'll so, second that. All right. I have a motion from Commissioner Gilbert, seconded by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries Robin 7 0. Um, just FYI, is, at this point, we don't have any rezoning or use permits for next month. There's a possibility to have a preliminary plat to come in, um, but I'll let you know about that and keep you apprised of whether uh, we can cancel the meeting in May. So, okay. okay. Great. Thank you. I have a motion. Any other questions or comments before we adjourn? Motion for adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Took a longer to get here. <laughs> Can you give me a blue pen? I don't know, man. That's what I get to get here. Oh, we're going to sit in traffic. That's what I was just sitting here thinking. I'm like, wait a minute. Hey, you want me to get here? I might go over here and go to Cans or something. <laughs> This is unheard of. Yeah. Way longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all blind dogs. You know, it's funny. I looked at the first time I ever went to watch it. You weren't yeah. out. Yeah, all the city's always got problems with her, you know. Yeah. 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 That would be funny.